Live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio at the beautiful Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, it's The Bottom Line with Jacqueline Sheldon on Business Radio X. Maximize your return on investment by reducing your tax bill. Get ready for the best tax talk you've ever had. It's The Bottom Line, presented by Bottom Line Tax Solutions. And we are back with everyone. There's time for more Bottom Line. Jacqueline, are you ready? How are you doing today? I am ready, Tom. I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I am always fantastic. Have you been busy? I have been busy. It's your, it's your time of year. It is. It's, it's definitely the busiest time of uh, tax season. Here. First that. part of March is really crazy. I've just been hanging out, answering phones, returning phone calls, nothing crazy. Gotcha. Just, you know, trying to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Even if it's wrong, I try to make it happen. Before we get down to today's business, hot and heavy about today, what we're going to be talking about. First of all, you are a 25-year-plus veteran of this industry. I am. Saving people money on their taxes. I am. Because uh, as it's been said before, if people don't, taxpayers don't deduct the deductions they should or take the deductions they should, the IRS will not remind them of it. The IRS will just take their money. That is true. You know, the Government Accountability Office did a study not too long ago that showed that small business owners collectively overpay their taxes by over $1 billion each and every year. Billion with a B. Billion with a B. And one of the reasons that uh, that happens is they don't take all the deductions that they're entitled to. That could be from the fact that they don't realize the deductions are available, or it could be from the fact they just don't keep good records. But either way, yeah, the IRS is not going to tell you if you don't deduct everything that you can possibly deduct. Well, I, I guess it, it's hard to know if, or hard to take a deduction if you don't know you can. That's very true. These laws change all the time. They do change all the time. Yeah. And this year, in particular, we're dealing with a lot of new tax Big laws, changes. a lot of changes. It's almost not fair. But before we really get into into the into the meat and potatoes of today's show, uh, I, I think there there was a little bit of a gauntlet throw down by a, a friend of ours said that uh, something about we we make talking taxes fun or at least we try something something like that. We try. And we do. I, I think I think this is very exciting what we do here here at Business Radio X. Okay. Yeah. Taxes are always fun. We always have fun. What are you talking about? Never mind that guy. But today we're going to be talking about top 10 mistakes that cost small business owners money. Yeah, as you mentioned, Tom, I've been uh, working with small business owners for over 25 years. So it's kind of like the insurance commercial. We uh, know a lot because we've seen a lot. So I want to kind of cover some of the mistakes that I see, uh, the most common mistakes that I see that small business owners make that cost them money on their tax returns each and every year. I imagine there has to be strategies multiple strategies no one size fits all to saving to to not be making these mistakes and and saving your own money right keeping your own there's a lot of strategies that a small business owner can use lots of different types of strategies that a small business owner can use to be able to take things they're spending now with after-tax dollars and turn those into tax deductions and pay for them with pre-tax dollars so i imagine using pre-tax dollars is much more helpful. It's definitely uh, the way to go if you're looking to save money on your taxes. You know, probably the biggest mistake, we'll just start with mistake number one. The biggest mistake that I see small business owners make is they fail to plan. They'll wait until tax time. They'll throw a bunch of receipts in a shoebox or in in an envelope. They'll take them to their accountant's office and then kind of cross their fingers and hope for the best. And it doesn't matter how good you and your accountant are with a stack of receipts on April 15th, if you didn't know that you could possibly deduct a medical or set up a medical reimbursement plan and deduct your child's braces as a business expense, by April 15th, it's just too late. If you're looking to maximize your deductions, you have got to plan. You have to be proactive, and that's where tax planning comes into play. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a window that closes, and that, that, that window closes what, on, on January 1st? Yeah, in most of the cases, new year. well, yeah, at the end, December 31st, midnight, you should start a new year you start a new tax year as well right right hard to go back and make changes so you talked about pre-tax dollars what in the world is that that created with deductions yeah it's, it's, it's taking things that you may be spending money on now and finding a way to turn those into a business deduction we'll talk about a couple of those when we go through some of these strategies well now 
you actually helped um, my brother-in-law with something that that was really pre-tax dollars because his daughter wanted to go to a summer camp or something. Right. Uh, Your brother-in-law is a small business owner, Mm -hmm. and he has Mm -hmm. a daughter who is 14 years old, and she wanted to go to horse camp this summer. It was a two-week horse camp. And so he had a couple of options there. He could pay for horse camp personally with after-tax dollars, or we came up with a strategy where he could hire his daughter to work for him in his business. By doing that, then he was able to pay his daughter for her time, take a deduction for that money, and then she paid for the horse camp out of her earnings. So technically, we took something that was not deductible, horse camp, and turned it into a business expense. By using pre-tax dollars. And we're, we're going to talk about more or more about employing employing family members here shortly. Right. Um, but, th- but that jumped out at me with the pre-tax dollars things. Because face it, you have more buying power because you literally, pre-tax dollars, you're using a full dollar. Right. 100 cents. Right. So if, if you look from, at it from a standpoint that by the time you pay your federal tax, if you're self-employed, you pay Social Security and Medicare tax, you pay state income tax, out of every dollar you earn after taxes, you may only have 57 cents left. 50, yeah, fifty something cents. So it's almost a two to one ratio. If if I pay for this with with pre tax dollars, or or if I if I pay for this with post tax after tax dollars, it's almost a two to one ratio. Well, it is, and you got to look at it from the standpoint that when you pay for something with pre tax dollars, the IRS is actually paying a portion of that expense for you. Well, that, that feels good. <laughs> the IRS. All right. Now, something that that I know is a, is a mistake that that several small business owners make is not being the right entity or, or staying an entity maybe too long in one direction or the other. Right. Well, your choice of entity not only determines your legal structure, but it also determines your tax structure, what taxes you pay, what forms you file, and what deductions that are available to you is all determined by your choice of entity. And entity selection is not a one-size-fits-all situation. What may be good for your next-door neighbor may not be the best entity fit for you. So it's something you always want to look at. And as your business grows, the choice of entity may change. And you may outgrow the entity that you're in, and tax-wise may be better to move to a different type of entity. Now, when, when we say entity, we're meaning sole proprietorships? Partnerships, S-corps, S-corporations, uh, C-corporations. C-corporations. You've got ver- several different options there as far as entity selection that you can run a business under. In each each entity has its own pros and cons i would it does so it's the one that fits you best exactly i got you and as you said that can change your business does better does worse right and that's something when we do a tax plan with a small business owner we always look at what entities uh, they're operating under and is there a better entity choice for them tax wise no that's very important because that that can truly save or cost depending on how you're doing it Right, and we've seen true money, we've real money. Seen cases where just changing uh, entity type has saved taxpayers five, six, seven thousand dollars a year just by changing their entity. I can I can speak to that personally. Forgive, forgive the host for sharing a, a, a quick, quick story. Many, many, many years ago, a much younger version of me. Now I've always been a small business owner my whole life, literally. Uh, I had a tax man, just a tax man doing my taxes i was a sole proprietor and i asked him many many times now again i i was a little, little more than a kid at the, at the time uh should i incorporate should i incorporate should i incorporate and he oh no don't don't do that don't do that don't do that well after four or five years of asking him this question i finally asked someone else hey should i incorporate he was a cpa he said absolutely i can save you this i can save you that he was suddenly saving me four or five thousand dollars a year by just simply becoming an S-Corp. Right, and that is definitely something we look at when we're doing a tax plan, but there again, S-Corp may not be the best option as well. Well, no, the, but in, in my situation, it was, it and, that, was. and that's the direction we went. Right. Unfortunately, the tax man, great guy, he knew my parents, it turned out he did not want me to become a corporation because he did not know how to do a corporate tax return, and he did not want to lose me as a client. Okay. So he cost me like twenty grand. <laughs> for his $120 a year to do my tax return. Okay. That's a true story. So I guess having the right person is very important as well. Well, it is. And there again, like I said, it's something you always want to keep in mind is that the choice of entity does dictate what tax deductions you can take. And oftentimes just changing entity can save you a lot of money. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let's talk retirement plans. Now, we're not financial advisors. That's not what we're here for. But 
retirement plans. I, I know those, those are awfully, uh, oftentimes not done correctly. Right, and that's probably uh, number four on our top ten list of mistakes. I believe is it is. Choosing the wrong retirement plan. And, you know, small business owners, they have several choices of retirement plans that they can choose from. You know, if you're a W-2 employee, you have the choice of what your employer provides, if they even provide a retirement plan, or you can put money into a personal IRA. But as a small business owner, you do have several other options. There's simple plans, there's SEP plans, there's 401k plans, different things that you can set up that is always a good option if you're looking to save money on your taxes is to put some money into retirement. I, I always hear people scream Roth, 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 Roth. Those are tax-free, correct? We've talked about those before in the past. Right. We have talked about Roths. Roths are great in some situations. If you're looking for a current tax deduction, though, a Roth is not going to help you. Right. Um, but they do grow tax-free, and mm -hmm. when you take them out at retirement, they come out tax-free. So right. Roths can be a good choice, and I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes as well. Right, right. This this is all, uh, I guess, it, it just kind of intertwines with itself, sort of. I don't know. Taxes are everywhere, folks. It's all in our lives. Now, when we were talking about pre-tax dollars, we were talking about employing family members, family members. Uh, yeah, and that's probably our fifth mistake there that mm -hmm. we want to talk about today, and that is missing family employment. You know, there's opportunities there for small business owners to maybe hire their child, or if they are financially helping support a parent, they could hire their parent to work in their business. And sometimes hiring your spouse to work in your business can also be a good strategy. I think you you shared a story uh, in one of the previous shows about you saved a client she was employing her son she was a real estate agent yeah we did have a real estate agent client that we did a tax plan for and one of the strategies that we utilized for her is we had her hire her son to work with her in her real estate business um, by doing so not only did was she able to save tax dollars herself uh, I think the scenario we ran, she was paying her son $2,500 a year. Right. And it was saving her about $1,100 a year on taxes. So that definitely was a plus to her. But the beauty of her situation is out of that $2,500 that she was paying her son, she was putting $2,000 of that into a Roth IRA. She was him. investing it for him. She was. Right. And but the savings alone, $1,100 a month. A year. Or a year, I'm sorry, $1,100 a year. That alone, is, is, again, it's real money. It's, it's money that she would have spent either way and got the savings. Did I say that right? Probably not. But it's by, by employing your family, you do have breaks. Uh, yeah, there are definitely some tax breaks there because, you know, you, let's go back to hiring your child for just a second. You know, by doing that, you're moving money out of your tax bracket into potentially a That's lower tax bracket. That's what I was trying to say, exactly. Or a zero tax bracket. Right. So definitely a way for you to be able to save money on your taxes. And there again, you know, in most cases you have a child, you're paying for things for that child. You're paying for horse camp like what we talked about before. Or maybe you're paying for their cell phone or their car insurance or their pizza money or whatever. By employing your child, you can take those things that you're now paying with after-tax dollars and move that over to a business deduction by doing payroll for the child and pay for those things with pre-tax dollars. Got you. It's all about the pre-tax dollars. Folks, we're going, going to take a quick break. We're going to be back in just a moment for the, I guess, are we halfway through our top ten mistakes? We are. I'm not really numbering them, and I, I guess I'm supposed to be, but uh, maybe we'll do better on the second half. Are you paying too much in taxes? Who isn't? Taxes are the highest expense small businesses face. Maximize your return on investment. Reduce your tax bill. Tax planning and tax resolution strategies, the art of keeping more money you've worked hard for. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting www.bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. That's bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. My small business had done well and thought I'd paid my taxes. Then I got a letter from the IRS. I didn't know what to do. So I called Bottom Line Tax Solutions. They understood exactly what I was going through. Bottom Line worked with me and for me. They turned a horrible time into a manageable one. Now I'm in a payment plan I can afford. And they were able to get my penalties reduced. 
Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting BottomLineTaxSolutions.com. Folks, we are back with the top 10 mistakes that's, that cost small business owners their own money. Jacqueline, you're still here? I am here. You haven't run off from me yet? Not yet. Awesome. But she's thinking about it, folks. Watch out. Jacqueline, how do the folks get a hold of you real quick before we go, go any further? Uh, they can visit our website, which is BottomLineGA.com, or you can call our office at 678-866-4047. Awesome. And this is your busy time, so you will be getting back to people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we're talking about the top 10 mistakes that cost small business owners their money, and, and this is somewhat around deductions that they, they could take, that they don't take. Am I on the right track with that? You are. You are. Good. Good. We're going to skip ahead to one. Let's talk about home office deductions. Let's start off the second segment with that, because this affects a lot of people. Now, in the past, I was always told that home offices, the deductions for home offices, were a huge red flag for audits. The IRS focused on those. Is, is that true? Yes, no, past, present? Uh, it's really not true anymore, Tom. Uh, back many years ago, office and home was a red flag on tax returns, but the IRS has changed the rules on that several times in the last 20 years, and they've really relaxed the rules on home office deduction. So as long as you qualify, and to qualify, that means that, that you have a place in your home that's used regularly and exclusively for business purposes, and that you use that office to perform administrative or management uh, services for your business, then chances are you qualify for a home office deduction. And that can add up to several thousand dollars in additional tax deduction that you can take on your tax return. So I use my, my kitchen table to do business. Does that count? Can I write off my whole kitchen? You cannot write off your kitchen. There again, it goes back to a area in your home used regularly and exclusively for business. So you do need a separate area in your exclusively home. Exclusively for business. But now the hallway, I, I have to walk down the hallway to get to my office. No, that does I, not I can't write either. the hallway off no. either? Oh, no. well, okay. That's no fun. So I take it that's a percentage of the home right your deduction what you're going to do is you're going to take the square footage of your home office space and you're going to divide it by the total square footage of your home that's going to give you the business use percentage right. and then you're able to deduct that percentage of the utilities that you pay on your home your repairs and maintenance your taxes your insurance the different costs of operating your home you can take that as a business deduction i know that i know the answer to this question documentation 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 that's what you have to provide to do this yeah you do want to keep good documentation on anything that you deduct on your tax return but yeah definitely want to measure that square footage make sure you've got that measured out and then you want to make sure you keep good records on the repairs and maintenance that you make to your house your utility bills those kind of things gotcha gotcha how about the yard maintenance you can actually take a percentage of your yard maintenance really really well, I guess if you're entertaining clients at your home, you want them to see something pretty. Well, that's it. If you have clients coming in and out, definitely. That makes sense. That makes sense. There's there's a lot to that that could easily be missed. Right. And there's an opportunity there, again, to take things that you may be paying for now with after-tax dollars and move them uh, over and pay them with pre-tax dollars. There's those pre-tax dollars coming right back, coming right back. Um, Health care and, and medical. Now, we talked about that a month ago. Or, or one of our previous shows. I know that that's intertwined, intertwined with the tax world, but what are mistakes that are made not maximizing that? Well, we did talk uh, on our last show about health care costs and how hard it is now with the new tax law for taxpayers to be able to get a deduction for their medical expenses. And as a small business owner, you do have a couple of additional options there as well. If you pay for your own health insurance out of pocket, you may qualify for the self-employed health insurance deduction. And that's also one, we were talking about hiring family uh, earlier. That's also an option for hiring your spouse. If you hire your spouse to work in your business, then you could potentially set up a medical reimbursement plan and pay your out-of-pocket medical expenses through that plan. That works for you if you don't have any other employees. So you, you want to be in a situation where your spouse is your only uh, employee for the business besides yourself but that's a good option now by by employing your spouse and the medical reimbursement that's all you 
have quote unquote have to pay them instead of you don't have to pay them a salary you the, the medical reimbursement can be their pay for well, it, what they do it, it can they, it can stand alone what you have to do is is make sure whatever you're paying your spouse is reasonable compensation oh, of course it all has to be reasonable for the number of hours that they work so you kind of want to look at it from that standpoint and if the medical reimbursement adds up to reasonable compensation right. for their time then yeah you can pay them just with medical reimbursement but that only works for your spouse for your spouse now if you're an s corp you can't do any of that you cannot do medical reimbursement plan as an s corp so there again we were talking about choice of entity earlier and that's always one of the things we look at what kind of medical cost does this this uh, taxpayer have because in some cases they're better to stay as a sole proprietorship hire the spouse and use the medical reimbursement than they are to go over to the s corporation status just for that reason i know when when uh, i'm at presentations with you you always make the comment to to uh, be able to get your your daughter's braces as a as a write-off tax-free i don't know what the exact words you are but you always bring that up i always find that uh, that very entertaining but true i guess well that's true within a medical reimbursement plan if you have a child that you're having to pay for braces you can actually reimburse that cost to your spouse of course reimbursing it to your spouse includes your spouse's family which then includes you is your daughter and your daughter yeah more pre-tax dollars folks cool i like pre-tax dollars um as a small business owner my business uh, often involves driving of company vehicles a small fleet of vehicles now there are mileage mileage deductions correct there are okay how does that work i know if if you can take actual expense on a vehicle. You can take mileage expense on a vehicle. Right. You have you know, a couple different options when it comes to business use of automobile. You can take the standard mileage rate, which for 2019 is 58 and a half cents a mile. Or you can take the business use percentage of actual expenses, which would be your gas, your insurance, your repairs and maintenance, and then you actually depreciate the cost of a vehicle. So there's two different ways that you can uh, deduct mileage expenses. Regardless of which way you go, though, it's very important that you keep a mileage log and you track those business miles versus personal miles. And there's so many apps out there now that you can download on your phone that makes mileage tracking really easy. So you definitely want to look into those. You have to, again, you have to document it. You have to document it. But someone, if not yourself, a tax professional, needs to take the time to see which is a better route to go. Right. You always want to weigh the options and see. Normally, I find if a client drives a lot of miles, standard mileage comes out better. If they don't drive a lot of business miles, actual oftentimes will come out better. But you always want to look at it and see which is going to be the best deduction. Now, I will tell you, once you decide to take actual expenses on a vehicle, then you're locked into taking actual expenses for as long as you have that vehicle so first year you take standard mileage rate great second year you can look at it and say do i want to do standard mileage or do i want to do actual uh, if you decide to go actual in the second year then you're locked into actual expenses gotcha gotcha and i would imagine also the, the 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 type of vehicle you drive would would possibly enter into this uh, great on gas and maybe not so great on gas Right, we Cost, find that usually, expenses, yeah, again, your new SUVs, vehicle, old vehicle, your SUVs, your larger vehicles, you know, your your operating costs on those are higher. Right. So those oftentimes actual expenses will come out better on those. So you really truly have to take the time, and and that's the mistake that small business owners make. They don't take the time to to weigh the options, which one to, to right. use. Right, and you definitely want to look at it both ways because you don't want to leave money on the table. Exactly. Exactly. Now. Um, Something that that I think there's a there's a little bit we're 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 on to number nine, Jackie. We're on to number nine. Uh, something that that may be a, a little cloudy because I know it's been changed around by law is meals and entertainment. Uh, small business owners don't write off, can write off. They should, they shouldn't. When it comes to meals and entertainment, can they still? Well, the new tax law, originally when it was proposed, they had decided to take away business meals and entertainment. But when the final law was written, uh, they did leave business meals as deductible. So small business owners can still deduct business meals. You can no longer deduct business entertainment, though. Gotcha. Gotcha. And the the mistake is what? No documentation, let me guess. Yeah, you want to keep good documentation on business meals because... The IRS says for those meals to be deductible, there had to either be a business meeting 
in place. You had to have met with a client, a prospect, a vendor. There had to be a, a business meeting take place for the meal. Or you have to be out of town for a business purpose. So you want to keep good records on that. Uh, as far as your business meals, who you met with, what the business purpose was, so you can substantiate that it was definitely a business meal and that you just didn't drive through McDonald's and grab a cheeseburger. Well, that was going to be my next question. If if, if I leave my, my first meeting, my first appointment, I stop at Starbucks, I get a coffee. Okay, everyone knows me. I'm too cheap for Starbucks. But I get a cup of coffee, and then I, on my way to my second appointment, that cup of coffee isn't, isn't a write-off, is it? It is not a deductible business meal, no. Right. But now if I was out of state, it probably would be. Right. If you were traveling out of state for business purposes, of course. then your meals at, while you're traveling, those can be deductible. I got you. I got you. And I think number 10, this is probably the biggest mistake that the small business owners make, is they try to do everything themselves. Right. Well, when it comes to your taxes, the, as we've talked before, tax laws are constantly changing. There's a lot to know. There's a lot of I's that have to be dotted and T's that have to be crossed to keep deductions within the IRS sc scrutiny uh, so that they are allowable in case of audit. So you don't ever want to try to do it yourself. It's just too much to keep up with. Uh, working with someone who is a tax planner is always key. Someone that will help you know what deductions are available, help you maximize those deductions so that they can help you lower your tax liability is is key if you're really looking to uh, reduce the amount of taxes that your small business pays every year. Yeah, I'm a small business owner. I'm trying to compete. I'm, try I'm trying to, to, to put my mark on the world. Keeping up with tax laws is something I just, I don't know if I have the mental capacity to do it, but let alone I don't have the time to do it. Right. That right. is why we have a professional taking care of it for us. Well, that's it. You, you have a full-time job just keeping up with the tax law changes so having like someone it. who does that for a living is, is very important so having a tax plan or at least it sounds to me having a tax plan is very very important it is so how in the world does this work well what we do when we do a tax plan for a client is we'll do what's called a discovery session we'll have them send us two gears worth of past tax returns and we'll, re we'll review those returns and we're looking for missed opportunities, maybe uh, missed deductions, things that they might do differently going forward that would help save them money. Uh, if by looking over the tax returns we feel like they're a candidate for a tax plan, then we will actually go through a longer review, we'll ask them a lot of questions, have them do a questionnaire, and then we'll put together a comprehensive tax plan that gives them a step-by-step -step guide of uh, the different tax laws that they may want to be able to take advantage of, the different deductions that they could take advantage of, and what those would save them in tax dollars. Gotcha. So it starts out basically you're a second set of eyes. Exactly. And that doesn't cost anything, does it? No. We do the discovery session. The initial discovery session is free. We'll do that at no charge. And uh, we'll take a look and see if there's anything we can do to help you save money. Awesome. And that's what you do best. That's what we enjoy. That is the bottom line, right? That is the bottom line. Well, Jacqueline, this has been fun. We've chewed up almost 30 minutes again. Um, I thought it was really cool touching on these things. And, and th th these are these are everyday things that we see, that you see, and, and, and they're real, trying to save people more money that they've worked hard for. You want to do this again next month? We will. Cool, cool. Well, folks, thank you so much. We will be with you soon. Thank you for sharing your time with us on Business Radio X. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting www.bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. That's bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. And click the link to hear more podcasts like this one. I'm Tom. She's Jacqueline. And that's the bottom line.